The SAT is changing. I'm Nathan Greenberg, founder of Ivy League Mentors. I've been teaching SAT for over 13 years, and I'm going to help you figure out what that means for you. In this video, we're going to be covering five key questions. First, what's different about the new SAT? Second, what's the same about the new SAT? Third, is the new SAT easier or harder? Fourth, how is the new SAT scored? And fifth, most importantly, what can I do to prepare for the new SAT? So let's get started. What's different about the new SAT? Well, the first key difference is right there in the name. The College Board is calling it the Digital SAT, and it is, indeed, a fully digital test. Now, that doesn't mean that you can take it at home on your own computer. You're still going to have to go into the testing center. But it does mean that the days of number two pencils and filling in bubbles are done. It's all going to be digitalized. Now, another key point about the new SAT is that unlike the previous SAT, it's adaptive. What that means is the questions that you're going to answer depend on the previous questions you're answering. So if you do well, they're going to feed you harder questions. And if you do badly, they're going to feed you easier questions. This means that not everybody is taking exactly the same version of the test. And that has important implications. We're going to talk about that more later. Let's move on to the last key difference between the old SAT and the new SAT. This is one that I think most of you are going to enjoy. The new SAT is significantly shorter and more streamlined than the previous version. The previous test took about three hours, the new one is down to closer to two. And instead of having separate sections for writing and reading, those are combined into one writing and reading section. Another difference is that on the math section, you are now able to use your calculator the whole time, instead of just on one of the sections. Again, this should be good news for most test takers. So let's move on to the next question. What's the same? Well, the simple answer to that is that actually, apart from the things I've mentioned, most of it's the same. There are a few key differences in terms of the content, and I'm going to get into that in another video. But generally speaking, the level of difficulty and the types of questions that you're going to be answering are fairly similar. The other thing that I want to mention that's also the same is the score. All right, so just like in the previous test, the SAT is scored on a scale from 400 to 1600. And of course, you want to get as close to that 1600 as possible to maximize your chances of getting into the best school. Now let's move on to another related question. A lot of students have asked me this. Is the new SAT easier? Well, actually, that's kind of a complicated question to answer. A lot of people will say that it is easier, and in some ways, yeah, maybe it is. As I mentioned before, one of the main differences about the new SAT is that it's a lot shorter. So if you were the kind of person that suffered from test fatigue, you start falling asleep in the last section of the test, well, that's not going to happen, or it's less likely to happen on the new test. Another thing, is that the reading passages themselves are much shorter. So if you were the kind of person that tended to get lost in very long, complicated reading passages, that's also less likely to happen. All in all, I would say that the new test does feel a little bit easier than the old test, but there is an important exception that I have to mention. Because the SAT now, as in the past, is a scaled test. What that means is what you're really being measured is not on how many questions you get right, but on how you're doing relative to everybody else who takes the test. So if the test is really, really hard, it's going to be hard for you, but it's also going to be harder for everybody else. And this means that your scale score might actually better. Meanwhile, if the SAT is especially easy, it's easy for you, but it's also easy for everybody else, which means that your scaled score will not necessarily be any better than if you do less well on a harder test. So yes, the SAT may be slightly easier, but getting a good score is going to be as hard as it ever was. Well, now that we're on the topic of scores, I'd like to move on to the fourth question. How is the new SAT scored? Now this one is a little bit complicated. The old SAT was scaled in a very simple way. You got a raw score based on how many questions you got right, and then they scaled them to ensure that everybody would be in the same ranges. On the new SAT, it's a little bit different. Not every question has the same weight. 
The College Board has invented a new algorithm for scoring the new SAT, but they haven't been very open about it, which means there isn't a lot of publicly available information. The good news is that I've taken it upon myself to do a little bit of investigation for you and test out some things. So remember at the beginning of the video, I said that the new SAT is an adaptive test, which means that it changes. Well, that has a very important implication for how the SAT is scored. The test is not adaptive question by question, rather it is adaptive section by section. So there are two reading and writing sections and two math sections. And your score on the first reading and writing section and on the first math section will influence the difficulty of questions that you receive on the second section. So one question that you might ask yourself is, how well do I need to do on the first section to get the more difficult advanced questions on the second section? This is one of the things that I tested by taking several administrations of the release practice test. And my answer for you at least for the reading and writing, is that you can afford to get roughly 10 out of 27 questions wrong and still get the more difficult set of questions the second time. Now, why does that matter? Well, this is where we should get back into scoring. One question that some students have asked me is this. Is it better to do well on the first set and then get hard questions and get them wrong? Or is it better to do badly on the first set so I can get easy questions later and get those right? It turns out there is a very clear answer to this. You want to do well on the first section so that you can get the harder questions. Let me explain why. So I decided to run some tests. Here's what I did. I decided to take the test one time where I would get a perfect score on the first section. I'd get all the questions right, and then I'd move to the harder questions and I try to get most of them wrong. And I would see how that influenced my score. And it turned out that when I got a perfect score on the first set, and then I did pretty badly on the second set, I still got a decent score, 660 out of 800 overall. However, when I tried the reverse, when I tried to do very badly on the first section and I got the easier questions for the second set, and I got all of them right, my score was only a 580. All right, this leads me to believe that if you want to get above a 600, you pretty much need to get the more difficult set of questions, which means you need to get no more than 10 questions wrong and preferably fewer on the first section. That said, I wouldn't necessarily say that the first section is always more important to your score, especially if you're the kind of student that wants to be getting an 800 or a 1600 total. And here's the reason why. I was wondering, what do I need to do to get an 800? Again, I test this out on the reading and writing sections. Here's the bad news. When I got just one question wrong on the second module, I got everything on the first one right and just one question wrong on the second one, my score dropped from 800 down to 770. That's a pretty big decrease. However, when I reversed that and I got one question wrong on the first module, still got the more advanced questions for the second one, and I got a perfect on the second one, it gave me an 800 overall. This leads me to believe that if you want a very, very high score, getting perfection or near perfection on the second module within each section, the harder one is actually more important. So that's good information to know. Unfortunately, it may not be that helpful for you. The bad news is that if you want to do well on the SAT, especially the new SAT, you need to get pretty much every question correct. And again, that may be because the new SAT is a little bit easier. But getting that top score is going to be as hard as ever because the competition is going to be fierce. A lot of other students are going to get every question right. And so if you want to get the highest score, you need to get basically every question right also. Well, now that we've got scoring out of the way, I'd like to move on to the final topic for today. What can I do to improve my chances of doing well on the new digital SAT? Well, one of the first observations I can make is that success on the new SAT is not all that different than success on the old SAT. And related to that, I'd like to point out that the SAT is not meant to test you on knowledge or strange abilities. Rather, it's meant to measure your academic preparedness. It's testing you on reading. It's testing you on writing. It's testing you on math. 
If you've gotten to this point, you've probably been studying reading, writing, and math for most of your life. You study that in elementary school. You study that in middle school. You study that in high school. So the SAT is not something completely new. What I would say, though, is that if you find that you are personally weak in one of those areas, reading or writing or math, you might want to hone your skills a little bit. The second observation is it does definitely help to know the format of the test and the kind of questions that are asked. I'm going to be making many more videos in the future exploring this topic in detail, so I'm not going to go into depth on this now, but I will say College Board has released four practice tests that should give you a good feeling for what the new digital SAT is like. Take those tests. Take those tests, review your answers carefully, get a feeling for the kind of questions that they're asking you and also the kind of answers that they're giving you and what you can do to do better next time. Again, I'm going to be making some more videos that are going to give you more specific techniques to help you excel on the test in the future, but for now, simple practice is probably your best method. So there you have it, an overview of the new SAT. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I encourage you to click like and also to subscribe to the channel. We don't have a ton of videos up yet, but I promise that I'm going to be making some more in the future, covering a lot of other topics that could be related to potential test takers. In addition, I would encourage you to check out my website, Ivy League Mentors Prep. There's going to be a link in the comments. It also has a lot of other resources that can be useful to those who are trying to self-study, as well as links to contact me if you have any follow-up questions. Thanks again for watching.